right, it is one o'clock Eastern time, which is my time. Uh, we have people from all over the world here. So good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good day in general. This is going to be curbside and other delivery and outreach ideas with Jennifer and Dawn presenting. I'm going to hand it over to them in just a second. However, in chat, I am posting the captioning link if you want to follow along with our captioner. And our captioners have been awesome, so I want to make sure they feel loved because they have contributed greatly to the conference. Um, also, other contributors have been the Evergreen Community Development Initiative and Mobius, who are our sponsors, and we greatly appreciate that as well. So I am going to watch chat. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in. And otherwise, I am going to pass this over to Jennifer and Dawn. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Dawn. And um, we're going to talk about curbside delivery today. Um, this uh, part of the Evergreen module was um, it was developed in response to the pandemic, basically. And um, it works, it works well. Our libraries that use it have liked it. There are several bugs in the system. And um, I don't know, um, there, a couple of them, I asked Chris if he could make work on a, um, on a test server and his plate is so full right now. Um, he's like, I don't know what I did to make it work. So I'm gonna use our live production server today because it works there. So you will see a lot of um, references to pines and you know our our labels on things, but it's generally the same for everyone else. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. I want to share a window. All right, let me just get to the right window, I guess. Let's see. <laughs> Well, let me start. Let me try that again. Um, all right. I want to share. Rogan, my share button is grayed out. I know refreshing has helped for some people. Try refreshing your window. Unfortunately, I don't have any special controls for this. Yeah, per permission wise, Hopin is very simple. You, if you've been given permission to present, you have, in theory, all the permissions. Well, until she comes back, I'm going to test my ability to share because <laughs> that's one thing we don't need to go wrong twice. Okay, so yeah. my screen sharing is working. Yay! And I just added Dawn back into the session, so she should appear in any moment. Okay. Uh, Taryn, I have personally been using Chrome. Hopin recommends Chrome or Firefox. I've had some people say they have success using Microsoft Edge. Um, the big difference that I seem to have just that I can discern from uh, people's usage is that you need to make sure you disable plugins. Uh, quite a few audio problems have been traced back to hop in using a pop-up to cause an interaction with the window and activate audio, and pop-up blockers can be a problem. Uh, also, some privacy-related plugins seem to be an issue. So I have been running Chrome, and I did not plan on this related to any hop -in issues, but I just, out of habit, use uh, it in an incognito mode to avoid conflicts with caches and cookies uh, and plugins disabled. And it has been very stable and reliable for me. So. I do not see Dawn yet. OK. Well, maybe I will start with uh, my stuff first, and then she can 
uh, jump back in um, after the end of mine with, you know, it's it's kind of interchangeable. Um, so, you know, just that she has time to to get back in here. Um, so my part of the presentation is more about the practical workflows and the physical workflows inside your library and less about the module itself. Um, so <laughs> let me make sure that I am keeping things in the right place here. There we go. There we go. Yes. Okay. So presentation is up. And, uh, ooh, Don, you're back. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. Go ahead, Jennifer. I still can't share, so go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to Firefox and see if I can get in that way. Okay. Very quick. Browser permissions can definitely be a, a factor in this. So trying another browser is a good idea. Yeah. Go ahead, Jennifer. All right. So um, curbside delivery case study a uh, case study for Spark libraries. Um, my name is Jennifer Brook. I am the ILS application specialist for the Pennsylvania Integrated Library System, um, often called PALES, and PALES administers Spark, which refers to our Evergreen Consortium and its community members. I'll be discussing in very broad strokes the experiences of several Spark libraries who are using the curbside module. Our consortium consists of 160 library locations across 28 out of the 67 counties in Pennsylvania. The locations include unstaffed kiosks, bookmobiles, and libraries that are part of multi-county cooperatives. Selected locations started using the curbside module in July of 2020, and they all agreed that it was an improvement over the Google Sheets and pen and paper they were using previously. The one-click checkout of all of the items on the hold shelf for a patron helped save uh, staff time. And the module is configurable to allow or disallow patron self-scheduling, which most locations opted to disallow in the beginning because of the ever-changing na uh, nature of their hours. And uh, notices um, I set up in the beginning at the org unit level because some locations did not want to use them. They wanted to modify their hold notice instead. Eventually, after all of the libraries were up to the same speed and were ready, I transitioned it to a system level uh, curbside notice again. That way libraries could turn on the module in their library settings and start using it at any time and did not have to contact support to have the notices put in place. Um, and just as a brief screenshot here, here are what um, our notices uh, look like. I do have some ideas on how to clean them up a little bit more over the future, such as masking the email that is used and having it use a library appropriate email and things like that. Um, but for the most part, um, you have the notification that an item has arrived at the bottom. And then you have a notification that informs your patron that curbside is an option to pick up your uh, library materials. And then after a patron has made an appointment with you, the patron gets a confirmation of the uh, time and uh, the date and time of their appointment. And these arrive both email and text. And so you're seeing the text notices here. The email notices have the opportunity to have you know more instructions in them. But for the most part, I think we've all experienced the cases where patrons just don't read them and they do exactly as they like. <laughs> OK. So one of the main challenges with um, curbside is that patrons don't follow the same path to get their items. And <laughs> well, <laughs> that's just what it is. Um, so while the curbside module was timely and needed, it by no means solved the potential workflow challenges a library might face, might face when delivering items. And uh, in the experience of all the Spark libraries, the general unpredictability of patrons was a source of frustration. Every library has a few of those patrons who should have their own version of the lyrics for the song, How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria? How do you catch a cloud and pin it down? You don't. 
Those patrons are the salt on the rim of your glass of lemonade. They exist to help us appreciate the things we can predict and control, like your library staff workflows. So the workflow challenges. Um, staff want to plan ahead. They want to check the screen for updates, but it ties them to the workstation. Patrons don't arrive on schedule. Um, it only checks out items you know, uh, that are actually on the hold shelf. Um, and of course, there are no receipts upon delivery of items. And new holds arrive, but staff can't tell that there's already a curbside schedule picked up from the hold slip receipt. And so we're going to talk about a few of those challenges today. The, module for curbside was designed intentionally to keep staff from working too far ahead and thus staging items before they all had a chance to arrive to be staged. However, the reality is library staff need to be able to see ahead to plan their day to make sure staff are covered during busy times, breaks, meal times, and shift changes. Checking the module at regular intervals to see updates is necessary, but when you check the module is just as important, i.e. when. If you include it in every interaction with a patron, you can increase the opportunities for staff to see those all important updates. Uh, let's see. So it's really important when you are adding a service like this and indeed other delivery workflows in the future, try not to create new separate workflows for curbside or other delivery methods integrated into the workflows that you already have. When a patron calls for, you know, asking items to be set aside, you look up their account, you see all of their other holds, you analyze where they are, what's ready, what's in transit, when's the next delivery, do they already have an appointment scheduled, is it too soon? Ask them to reschedule. If you have situations occurring where patrons are missing items because they're coming in to pick up some items before your daily transit delivery arrives, consider limiting your appointments to after your daily deliveries. Uh, keep staged and unstaged items together physically. This way staff can see that a newly arrived hold should be grouped together with other previously staged items. Uh, some libraries were using paper bags with hold slips taped to the outside of the bag to keep staff, to help staff keep track of which patrons have an appointment and what was in the bag. And of course that open paper bag is easy to add items to over the course of the day. Keeping these items together physically and contextually helps staff have more opportunities to connect the dots while away from their workstations. All right, so in conclusion, uh, there's lots of feedback from Spark Libraries about the future of the curbside module and potentially other avenues of delivery. And I'm sure that our viewers today will also have some ideas uh, that we can add to this slide at the end of our session in our discussion time. And uh, of course, there's also the list of bugs that you can add heat to. And with that, I will hand it off to Dawn, who will be doing a presentation focused on how to set up curbside. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. Can y'all hear me? Can you okay, great. All right, I'm gonna try to screen share now. Um, There we go. Okay, can you see it? Yep, absolutely. All right, yay, that works. <clears throat> okay. Um, to get to, um, well, let me back up. First thing, let me say that I, this is going to assume that um, you are familiar with Evergreen and how how it works and how permissions work and that sort of thing. And if you're not a local admin, you won't be able to set these permissions yourself for the library. They will need to do it. Um, so first, I want to look at the permissions for the library and what uh, what they are. So I'm going to go to administration, local administration, and the library settings editor. And I'm using our state library today. That's one thing you want to make sure that you're giving the permissions to the correct library. And I'm going to filter by curbside. 
And there are four permissions that need to be set um, for curbside. The first one is disable patron mod modification of curbside appointments in the public catalog. And it's set to false, um, false as the default. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> that means that patrons can, can edit their pickup times in the catalog. That being said, there's a bug and there's actually no way that the patrons can do that. This, it doesn't show up in, in their in their account. Um, uh, it, we have a question from Meredith. He's uh -huh. asking about, does anything print to slip into the books? No, not to my knowledge. Okay. Enable curbside pickup functionally at the library. You want to set that to true. Maximum number of patrons that can select a particular curbside pickup time. So if you have your pickup times for, these are set for every hour, and I'm saying that 10 people can make schedule, schedule a pickup during that hour. Um, that's just what we have it defaulted to. And then the time interval between curbside appointments is one hour. You can set it to five minutes, 15 minutes, you know, whatever you want to set it to, and then you want to make sure that the number of patrons that can select that time is a reasonable number for your staff to handle. And those are the appointments that need to be, I mean, the appointments, the uh, permissions that need to be set for the library. <clears throat> Any questions on that? We're good. Okay. All right. So on your circulation menu, all the way at the bottom is curbside pickup. If you can't see it on your screen, at first I couldn't see it on my laptop screen because it's a little smaller, just um, reduce your screen uh, display and you'll be able to see it. It's at the very bottom of the menu. Okay, and this is your, this is your curbside pickup module. You have to be staged, staged and ready, patron is outside, delivered today, and schedule a pickup. So the first thing you're going to do, your patron has placed a hold and it has come in and the patron has gotten their notice that their hold is ready for pickup. Well, they can call you and say, I want to come and pick up my hold. And a lot of this, some of this will take patron training as well. During the pandemic, when the libraries were closed, um, patrons would say, I got a notice that my hold is ready, but the library's closed. How do I get it? So that was simple. Um, now, you know, they'll just have to know to call and schedule a time to come and pick it up. So, um, I'm going to, um, click on the schedule pickup window and you've got your patron barcode. You also have patron search. Um, and I, it, this actually works on it on the test server, but does not work in our production server. It'll flash real quick, but if you click on search, it brings up the patron search menu and it goes away for us. So, um, but you can search for a patron just like you always do. But if you have a patron barcode, you pull up the patron barcode. Let me get one right quick. Okay. And it tells me that this patron has one hold ready for pickup at this location. That's another thing that, that I, um, had to make sure that I was doing correctly is make sure that you're using the workstation of the pickup library. If the patron calls the wrong library, it's going to have to say they have zero holds at this location. You'll need to check their account and see what their pickup library is, and then they'll need to make arrangements with that library. Um, so, and you see the make appointment now button is kind of, it's light. It won't let me click on it. That's because this patron doesn't already have an appointment. If they already had appointment, an appointment for picking up five of their items and three more come in, you could make a second appointment for them or you could just um, include them in that first appointment. Okay. So we're going to um, pick a date. We'll say they're going to come in today. And these dates and times also follow um, your, your open hours. If you're not open, then you can't, they won't be able to pick it up. My only time slot left for today is 4 o'clock. Anything before 4 o'clock is too early. 
and we close at five. So I'm going to pick four o'clock. You can put a note here if you want. You can ask them what color car they're driving, um, anything like that, or whatever note you might need to put in there, you can put in there. And you click Save. All right. Now you'll see this available change to 9 from 10. That means one of the 10 appointments is already being used, and it's for this patron. You can also cancel appointments from here. If you if the patron called in, you could put in their card number and you could cancel their appointment from here. Okay. So now our patron has scheduled an appointment. So let's look at to be staged. When your staffer, um, if you have more than one person watching the curbside pickup location, whatever uh, menu, this tells somebody what items are ready for the patron is coming in to get. And um, as Jennifer said, you want to keep your ones that are ready or, or staged with your unstaged ones. So you'll make sure they pick up everything at one time. That would be the best workflow unless they don't want them all at one time. So um, you, we all have that one patron who says, well, I don't want to pick those up until Friday because I'm not going to be able to read it before then and I want my full two weeks or whatever checkout time. I don't want to lose any time. So I'll come back and get those. Y'all know that. Um, so um, we can uh, we see here the date and time, the patron, and the item to be picked up. Now, you can claim this one. Um, or a staff member can claim it. It says, hey, I'm working on this so that other staff members won't be looking for the same books that you're looking for. Or you can mark them staged and ready. So when you know everything is together and you know that they're ready to be picked up, you can mark them staged and ready. Okay, let's move to the staged and ready tab. <clears throat> um, I already had a different another one scheduled here too as well so you can see that I have two uh, pickups that are staged and ready one's at three o'clock and one's at four o'clock so I can um, I, any staff member that logs in can see what is staged and ready to go okay it gives you again the patron name and the item or the list if it's more than one item it will list all the items here that the patron is picking up so again, you can double check that you're giving them everything they need. You can mark it as patron has arrived. Maybe somebody else is answering the phone and the patron calls and says, hey, I'm outside. They can mark it that the patron has arrived. You can mark it check out and mark as delivered. And it will check the items out and mark them as delivered for the today. Or you can set the appointment back to be staged again. Maybe the patron calls and says, hey, I'm not going to make it today, or I'm not going to make it at 3 o'clock. Um, can, can we pick another time? And you mark, you mark it back as staged. Let's do this one back as staged. And it's back over here. And again, it's showing the time slot of 3 o'clock. But if I go in, I'm going to try to, let, let me get this patron number here. Copy and paste it. If I go back, I'm going to open a new window. If I go back to this patron's account in curbside pickup, It says they have one hold ready and it's at three o'clock. I can make a change to this appointment now. I can say, okay, they're not going to make it today. Let's push it out till tomorrow and they want to come at three o'clock again and I can save the appointment. And so now it's saved for three o'clock tomorrow. <clears throat> and they are no longer on. Yeah, they are. Let me refresh this screen. Uh, where's my refresh? Oh, it's under. I noticed there. Okay. Okay. And they are no longer on the to be stage. They're just, their stuff is ready to make a, uh, the new appointment has been made. They should have been to be staged now. Let me try that again. Uh, when you get a chance, Steve, we have a, a 
sorry, Don. We have a question from D in chat uh, about what's the best way to handle items not picked up by the day's end. Okay. I'll, I'll, let me get to that. I'll, sure. I'll answer that in just a second. Um, when I refresh my screen here and go back to the 2B stage, you don't see these because you can only see the next two time slots or for the rest of the day. And again, that's intentional um, that they don't want you to work too far ahead. Now, that being said, in Pines, we have set ours that we can see the next 10 time slots so that we can at least plan ahead but we can't see tomorrow's until tomorrow so that's why we're not seeing them in the to be stage now in the morning they will be here for to for to be staged again so the best way to handle things that are not picked up um, would be to go in and if they were staged and ready, mark them back to to be staged. And then you can call those patrons and ask them if they're still coming in to pick those items up or would they like to reschedule their appointment, that sort of thing. I hope you won't have very many of those, but I can see where you would have some. So if they're staged and ready, mark them back to to be staged and then you can change their appointment. Does that answer your question, D? Okay, I can't see the chat, so um, since I'm on, it's... it's um, she said that does answer her question. She okay. also asked if there is a way to have the screen auto-refresh. I have no idea. That would be a... Um, I, I don't know of any screen in Evergreen that auto-refreshes. I would think that would be a browser uh, setting and not an Evergreen setting. Am, am I correct on that, look? Uh, Rogan. Yes, um, and and there's a difference sometimes between the browser refreshing and pulling in new content. Uh, okay. But uh, as Taryn commented in chat, that definitely would be a wish list request. Okay. Um, and there have been a few other things mentioned in chat for wish lists that I definitely hope uh, make their way to Launchpad. And if anybody has wish list requests and they don't know how to put things into Wash into Launchpad. Feel free to contact me and I'll help you out with that. All right. I'll be glad to help you with that too. Yeah. Um, Rogan, when this is, since this is recorded, will the chat also be there? Uh, no, it is just the main screen, which is why okay. I'm trying to make sure that uh, things are commented on here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So now we have staged and ready. We have this one that is still staged and ready and the patron is going to come in. And again, you can mark the, the, item as a, uh, the patron has arrived. Let's just do that with this one and we'll go back and do another one to um, to, to show you the other other choices. All right, pa now their uh, patron is outside. So anyone looking at the curbside menu can go, oh, that patron's outside. Let me run and get those books and take them to them. You pick them up, you take them to them and you mark them as checkout and delivered. And you get marked curbside appointment as delivered. So these items are checked out to this patron. We're going to go to the patron account now. So we can see that they were checked out. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong account. That was, that was the other account. Let me get the right one. Okay, and now you can see that the item was checked out to this patron. So when, when you're in the curbside, the good, one of the best things about it is when you take the books out, you don't have to look up the patron's account and you don't have to check out each item separately and take it out. It will just automatically check them out. Now, is there a receipt for this? I haven't seen a place for a receipt to print and I haven't um i don't have a printer we're still teleworking i don't have a printer here at home um so but it doesn't it doesn't pop up for me to print a receipt so no i, I would assume a receipt does not print it is noted in the chat however that if your system has email checkout slips set up 
that those do trigger. Yes, yes they, and I w can confirm that because I get emails. The patron gets an email when they, the appointment is scheduled. They get an email, say you have an appointment scheduled. Um, they also uh, get an email when it's checked out if they do have that email for checkout. So the, I've gotten all those emails on these test accounts that I've set up. And we have a couple more questions from chat. Carol okay. asks, for statistical purposes, is there a way to note how many items were checked out? That is an issue with the report module right now. You are able to see the number of um, appointments, um, both past mm -hmm. and in the future. So you can use a report to see your future appointments if you need to, but right. it does not note the number of items that are delivered unless you are able to access the back end of the database. So that is a bug wish list development right. request. Is that on Launchpad already, do you know? Um, it's on my list to add if it's not already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, and then, well, questions. Uh, D asks, how do we increase the amount of appointments you can see? Uh, we can only see two time two two time intervals ahead. Um, um, I'm going to tell you that you're going to need to contact Taryn for that. She's the one who uh, did the patch for that and put it in on ours. So Taryn McKenna, sorry, I'm calling you out here and just putting you on the spot, but. Um, that's how um, she did it. I don't know how to do it. So, um, And then Lynn asks, uh, doesn't clicking the patron name link to the patron account? Doesn't yes. it? Yes. yes, it does. And I could have done that. Correct. Thank you, yeah. Lynn. Sometimes I just kind of forget that I can do that. But anything that's blue and underlined, you can click on it. It will, it will take you right to the, either the patron or the item, whichever you click on. So that is another shortcut to get the receipt. It's it's not far away. It's just not instantaneous. Right, right. You, yeah. Once you get to the patron account, then you can um, print the receipt under actions. Print item receipt. Okay. I think that catches us up on questions. So. Okay. Great. Great. Um, all right. Let me go to um, deliver today. This is your list of items that were to deliver today. So I guess at the end of each day for for now, as a workaround, it seems like a real pain, but you could count the number of items that were delivered today and make a note of it. Um, so you would know how many items were checked out via um, the curbside checkout. And then you're back to schedule a pickup. So let's do the other one, the other uh, choices there. Um, we're going to schedule another pickup for another patron. Um, and we're going to go ahead and try to schedule it for today if it will let us. So, yep. Um, and I'm going to put a note in here, blue Nissan uh, Accord. Okay and save. All right, it saved the appointment. So we're going to go over here to be staged. And there it's to be staged. And it's ready. Um, we can mark it as staged and ready. And now you can just, if, if you're ready, you can check the items out and mark them as delivered. You don't have to go through all the steps if you don't need to. So mark as checkout and delivered and go to your delivered and there's your items for delivered today. And you could, like you said, click on the patron account and print your receipt. And it would print your receipt if you had a printer. <laughs> Okay, and that's what your receipt looks like. I was going to go back and let me do, do one more because I was going to look at the note. I'm, the reason I put the note in there is I was going to actually look at and see where the note showed up. And I got ahead of myself. 
it might be good to also demo um, where you've staged one arrived hold and then another hold arrives after it's staged so that people can see what it looks like when that updates. Okay. All right, hang on here. Okay. I've got myself out of curbside, so let's get back in. Schedule a pickup. Which is today, four o'clock. And see, I only have eight slots available now because we've continue adding slots there and now it's changed to seven okay we're scheduled I did not put a note on that one so let me put a note on the next one I'm getting ahead of myself and forgetting to do things I apologize okay we're gonna schedule um, okay that one's staged and ready is this what you meant Jennifer that one's staged and ready and now do another one um, yes, that one is checked out though. Uh, although we might have a frozen screen situation. Dawn, are you away from Jan Copeland's test account? Hold on. Yes. Hold on. Let me go back over here. Okay. This is the strangest thing because I still have Chrome open and now it's sharing my Chrome screen, screen instead of my Firefox screen, which is the one I'm in. So hang on. Okay, we are seeing it move with you. Okay, there we go. All right, this is the one that's staged and ready. Or staged, let's make it staged and ready. All right, sorry, click the wrong thing again. And then we go to that patron's account and add another item. Add another item for hold, okay. Yes. All right, let's place another hold. Uh, try to use really generic terms so that I have lots of choices. <laughs> okay, we're just going to go ahead and pick this first one here. No, let's pick the second one because there's more than one copy. Place our hold. And then we capture it. Oh, yes. And then we capture it. Okay. So, um, to capture it, let me, let me go to the patron screen. Nope. Nope. Not there. Huh? That's a, the patron account or the item? Oh, uh, I'm just, yeah, I was going to, to get the patron account. Okay. Um, to see see which item it's selected for the hold. Ah, uh, okay. Because I wouldn't know which barcode to capture. And it's not showing there yet. All right, let me... Um, sometimes it takes our holds targeter a while to run. Yeah, see, it's not on our hold. Oh, you know what I did? I bet. Did I put it the right pickup library? Yep, it wasn't there. It wasn't on the patron account. Wait a minute. I might be on the wrong account. Hang on one second. I apologize, y'all. I'm getting myself all confused here. And I don't feel good about it. And I apologize very much. That's okay. We're all multitasking right now, keeping an eye on chat and things and interrupting you. So we apologize. Okay. No, this is for garden. They don't have a dog with a hold available either. Okay. Um, I think okay, let me go back to the other account, the Norma Barnes account. I'm going to place a hold again. It says she has zero of zero holds because hers are staged and ready or staged. Um, 
I think. No. They should still show their. I'm just going to click it that way. I'm going to close these other accounts. Yeah. Sounds there we good. Go. There we go. I'll quit confusing myself. Okay. Here we go. Here's the one I placed the hole. Okay. So now I can um, trap this, this barcode. And I can um, check this item in. Checking in and um, trap the hole is the same thing. Y'all, I assume, know that. Okay. And now it is ready. It's going to the public hold shelf, so that's good. So now we're going to go back to the curbside module. And we're going to look at his account again. We're going to uh, schedule a new pickup or just change the old one. Well, we should be able to just go to staged and ready. If I'm thinking this correctly, <laughs> there we go. So staged and ready, um, you can see that the one item was staged and it's letting you know that something new is ready. Right. Thank you. I forgot about that, that note that comes up there. Um, but now, is it, is it automatically added into the stage then ready, Jennifer? Well, this is kind of like a physical thing where if the two items are next to each other, um, you can just hit set back to be staged and restage it in like two clicks. Or if the items aren't physically together, then you should go and get them physically together, you know, during that staging process. Um, okay. All right, thank you. I have not had this come up for, with us, so thank you. So if you don't have them together, those two items, then you would want to set it back to be to be staged again until the second item is brought in with the first item. Um, that will keep it from being from somebody else thinking that both that everything is there when it's not. If if the patron were to arrive before you've got the second item there. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate your help with this. Um, okay. So with all that clear as mud, do y'all have questions about that? <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of interesting chat about some of the changes that people made to the scheduling, um, whether for staff or for patrons isn't quite clear. Some have, you know, shortcut buttons to choose days and times and the homebrew buttons have to be reset daily. Oh, Jeremy, you poor thing. Um, and while that sounds very interesting, it would be uh, lovely if there were something that didn't require quite so much maintenance. Um, so apparently there were some patrons who were having issues getting the calendar widget to display on the scheduling interface. Um, and perhaps staff might have run into that as well. Um, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, so they're saying that their patrons can see how to schedule an appointment? Uh, yep, yeah, but the calendar widget, like to change it to a different day, besides the default one that is uh, mm -hmm. picked is, is not coming up. So they made some homebrew buttons wow. to display the next like four days, it looks like. And then they just had to choose a time after that. Um, yeah, so Taryn says That's that they were. It doesn't show on ours at all. I don't, or I could, I didn't know. Let me, uh, let me pull up the OPAC. If you have it disabled, yes, patrons aren't going to be able to, to self-schedule. I, I have it set to false. Should it be set to true? Um, did I read it? Did I read it backwards? To allow them to, uh -huh. to schedule, I no, oh, I cannot recall now. I apologize. Okay, let me just go back. To, let's go back to um, the permissions, and I may have read it incorrectly. Sometimes the wording makes it look like it should be false when it should be true. Yes, we've all run into that situation. Uh, disabled patron modification. So ah. if it's disabled, would be true. So I have it set to false. Okay, so you should be able to see it. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go to the OPAC. And um, let's see. You'll need to log out. 
or open in an Actually, let me, uh, yeah. Let's see. Can I, I can share another window. Okay, hang on. I'm trying to figure out where I am here. Um, this patron, I need to set their PIN number so I can log into their account right quick. Okay, and I'm going to go into Firefox and I'm going to let it make it share another window. Hang on, so you're sharing another window application. Can you, uh, so can I make it, I can't make it share another window. Uh, Taryn says Don, uh, to Don that you won't see it in Pines because they're using the Bootstrap OPAC on 3.6 and the curbside module does not display okay thank it. you karen that answers the question you, that's why i can't see it in in the opac okay thank you karen i appreciate that i will work on getting a page set up so that we can see that okay all right <clears throat> okay so we added um we added this item to be staged and it's okay it's here so when we check out it will um it will, it will check out both items. So I am going to check out items and mark as delivered. And then we're going to go to the patron account. It says they were both checked out. Checkout item came in after appointment was staged. It's still there, but they're both there. I'm going to go to the patron account. And we can see that two items are checked out. Okay, so we have successfully checked out one, two, three, four, five items today on, on the curbside pickup where patrons did not have to come in. And I also want to say that you don't have to use this just when your library's closed. This is a good service to go ahead and use continuously for those patrons that have a hard time getting in and out of their car, have a baby asleep in the back. Um, you know, whatever reason they don't want to come into the library, um, this is a good, a good um, tool to have to carry forward for your outreach and hopefully increase your patron, uh, you know, patrons coming in to pick up items or using the library. So, as I said before, I'm sorry, this, I got kind of confused here and, and messed things up. Um, but if you have any other questions, can you tell me what they are? How are we doing here? Uh, chat's pretty quiet at the moment. Okay. Yes. Jennifer, did you get that the OPEC screen? I am almost done. Okay. Karen has supplied a link to the current launchpad bug about the bootstrap OPAC and that display element. So folks hey, Meredith, are welcome to test it, but it looks like uh, from her description that it does need a little bit more work first. Meredith says she sees my original screen. Taryn says she thinks it would be an interesting idea for libraries to have short hours to be able to extend curbside through a drive through window when the building isn't fully open. That's, that's a good one. Um, some libraries also want to be able to set their hours um, so that they're, maybe they're open from 9 to 9, but they only want to do curbside from 1 to 5. They want to be able to enter those hours as well so patrons will know. Which icons are you mean? Which icons do you mean, Meredith? Okay, so the screen is showing now. Okay. 
Karen may have something to do with those too. She um she does a lot of work with with the um setting of the uh, all the settings in our in our um skin page here or whatever you call it. Yeah, I have all those technical terms. <laughs> Curbside hours, yes. Thank you, Taryn. All right, I'm going to take over and see if I can get this little demo of curbside via the patron side of the OPEC to work. So this is our test system. I have a patron with a captured hold and I'm going to try logging into it. Okay, so we can see one item currently on hold. We can see a tab for curbside pickup. Let's just click on the items on hold. We can see the item that is on hold and we have another tab here for curbside pickup. These should both look the same. Okay, they go to exactly to the same place. You can see that that tab is highlighted. Okay, and we can see the pickup location. Their phone number is there handy in case the patron needs to contact the library. And then it does auto fill in a date for today. And in this case, we are able to see the calendar pop up for selecting a date in the future. Let's see, does it let you put in a different date manually. Yes, it does kind of unintuitively with that weird overriding thing. I don't get just a cursor um, to put in a date, which would be good, but you are able to type a new date in there as well. And then you have to click on check available times after you've selected a date and it will set up to look only um, the selected number of intervals in the future. So right now, I believe it's doing 15 minute intervals and it's 152 here in uh, Pennsylvania. So it's specifying that the patron can add a minimum request an appointment at least two intervals in the future. In most cases, it does keep patrons from saying, oh, I wanna you know, come to the library in the next five minutes, or I'm here in the parking lot and I want curbside pickup and that sort of thing. Um, it tries to make sure that your patrons don't mess with you like that, but patrons are gonna find ways around that no matter what happens. Um, so you can pick a time, you can put in you know, notes about what type of you know car and things like that we have you know added text here about vehicle description and things like that but um we could also you know say add in you know summer reading kits and things like that and then you hit request appointment and the appointment is scheduled and you have opportunities here to also update your appointment as well and also cancel the appointment and you can change whatever content is in the note there as well. Thank yeah. you Jennifer, I appreciate you demonstrating that. You're very welcome. Um, Amber asked how far out they can um, request curbside. I don't really know, Amber. I've not tried. Um, I just, um, I guess they could, <laughs> Jeremy or these, yes, I guess they could request it years in advance, but that wouldn't be very smart. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say however long. Um, we have a rule that we hold things, we keep things on our hold shelf for seven business days. I wouldn't want them requesting a time longer than seven business days. And um, you, Jeremy points out, how can they tell which dates are actually available? So uh, you're correct in that the 
calendar that pops up for patrons there in the OPAC does not show grayed out dates on which you're closed, for example, Sunday. But in my experience, if they select that day, they won't get any available time slots, um, yes. which will prompt them to try another day or just be very confused and call the library. <laughs> Um, it would be ideal if it would gray out or make unavailable dates that are, are closed. And when this uh, curbside module is looking for times that patrons can schedule appointments, it is looking at your hours of operation as listed in your org unit settings, which of course, if you have separate curbside hours from your hours of operation, that makes things a little prickly. Um, so you have to decide which hours win. And in most cases, the libraries decided that they would much rather um, have the curbside hours work as expected and change the hours of operation in those settings to reflect those. And that is a cur that is a, a bug wish list request as well to have a separate um, set of settings for curbside hours. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and you said to make sure your holidays are scheduled. That's correct. Somebody said a minute ago they couldn't see curbside, um, and that's because it's not set up in your system. The permissions are not there. That's why you can't see it. Um, or I thought I saw that. I may not have, but anyway. Um, I was trying to read the comments here. We are out of time, but I'm trying to read them all. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, just chat me. Some, you know, um, outside of the chat room, I'm um, outside of the session, um, and or chat Jennifer, and we'll be glad to answer any of the questions that we can for you. Okay, that's. I think that's it. If there, unless there's no more questions, because we have gone way over time here. <laughs> well, fortunately, we don't have a new session exactly at 2 o'clock. We oh, do cool. have lightning talks at 2.30, though, so anybody that wants to attend the lightning talks, please jump over to that session then. That is in about another 30 minutes. And thank you. Thank you, Don and Jennifer, for sharing with us. Thank you all for attending. We really appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.